Hey guys, in this episode, we're gonna show you 20 extreme furniture makeovers. This is a compilation style episode, so sit back and relax or DIY right along with us. So let's get started. We found this matching dresser and vanity set on Facebook Marketplace and ended up refinishing them for a client. So the first thing we started off with was giving them a good cleaning and sanded them because the current paint finish was a little bit rough and we were prepping it for a nice new coat of paint. We also decided to strip the top of the vanity to hopefully reveal the beautiful wood underneath. So we applied that. Once the entire surface is covered with the stripper, we covered it with just ordinary uh, kitchen plastic wrap to help keep it moist while the uh, stripper does its work. After a minimum of 30 minutes, you can go ahead and peel back the saran wrap and look how awesome it is that this paint is just peeling off. It was amazing. So we just used a little putty knife to scrape off as much paint as we could. Then we used a little bit of mineral spirits with a piece of steel wool to go across the top of this vanity. This is just gonna help us get into any of those grooves or nicks and dings on the um, vanity top to remove any remaining paint. Don't you love the color and the grain of this piece? It will be a little lighter once it's dry, but oh, I just think it's beautiful. And sometimes it's a shame to cover everything with paint. And then I'm just gonna wipe it down with some paper towel. And then we'll do a light sanding on it and prep it for its final top coat. Before we get to the top coat, we are painting both the dresser and the vanity. And we love using our um, Flexio 5000. It's from Wagner. It is the best little paint sprayer. You get this beautiful, like factory like finish almost. It's just like so smooth to the touch and it makes painting so much easier, especially on a piece like this where it has a lot of details. For the top here, I am going to use a wipe on poly. At first I was going to use the wax and then I decided that it really needed to be more durable than a wax. And so I'm going to use this wipe on poly just keeping it the natural wood tone that it is, not adding any stain to it. This is just the color of the wood. And I love this wipe on poly because it is so easy to use. You just put it on with a lint-free cloth. I just use an old t-shirt and you just wipe it on. So you never get brush marks uh, and it just gives it a beautiful hand rubbed finish. Then we allowed it to dry and we are going to do three coats of this top coat just to give it as much protection as possible. And we also decided to add a little bit of gold bling to these just to give them a little bit more character. So we're going to do that with gold leafing. So first we watered down some glue and we're just applying that more on the edges than anything where an old piece of furniture might have been worn. And then we're gonna take our gold leaf and apply that right to those glue spots. It's super easy to do. You just use a little paintbrush to dab it on. And then once it's in place, you use the brush again to just wipe away any excess gold. I can't even get over the difference in this little set of furniture. It looks so good. It's a little bit more modern and chic. I love those touches of gold. What do you guys think? Okay, you guys are gonna flip out when you see this next transformation. We are taking this dated piece of furniture my parents have had for over 40 years and turn it into a floating nightstand. It's gonna be awesome. By the time this is finished, you won't even recognize it. The first thing we're going to do is remove all the decorative trim work so we have nice straight lines to work with. Starting on the bottom trim, we flipped it upside down to work on it a little bit easier. And while it's upside down, we're going to use our drill to remove the top surface of the nightstand. Okay, you can already see it has more simple and clean lines. We're just gonna cut off some of the top and bottom so it's a little bit smaller scale and it's gonna look awesome in this bedroom makeover. We started with an 80 grit piece to knock down the stain 
and any ridges quickly, and then followed it with a 220 grit sanding. We're using the same top the piece originally had, but we're trimming the decorative edges off to create a more modern look. Once it was cut to size, we applied wood glue around the top of the nightstand and spread it out to cover the entire surface. Then we placed the nightstand upside down onto the top piece we trimmed down. And finally, we drove the screws down through the cleats into the top piece of wood. Now we're going to cut down a piece of scrap plywood to create the shelf piece. We took the measurements of the opening and transferred them to the piece of wood. Now plywood tends to chip easily when cutting, so we've learned that if you place a piece of painter's tape where you're going to make the cut, it minimizes the edges from chipping. Then Steph drilled four pocket holes on each side so that the shelf will be nice and sturdy. Once the glue was spread around, we slid the shelf piece into place. I started by installing the screw at the front of the shelf on the left side, then moved to the right. Next up, we're gonna modify the drawers to make them a little bit more streamlined as well. So the first thing we're going to do is to straighten up all the edges on the drawer front. Now let's finish off the drawer by, by giving it some style. First, we need to fill in the holes from the hardware. So I mixed up some Bondo and sanded it smooth once it had hardened. Then I cut several strips of screen molding on an angle to create this cool design on the front of the drawer front. Then I'm using some tile spacers to give myself a dry fit before gluing them down and securing them into place with breads. Then I trimmed the edges up with the table saw. We used plastic wood filler on each of the brad holes and seams and sanded them smooth. After sanding the entire piece down with 220 grit, we're ready for paint. We started with primer. We're using spray cans because it was just a little bit easier to get that smooth finish and get into those tricky tight spaces. Then we installed a cleat to hang this on the wall to get that floating effect. And for 20 bucks, we were able to completely transform that dated nightstand into this awesome modern floating one. What do you guys think? Yes, there were a bit of power tools involved in this project, but I think it hopefully gives you a good idea to imagine an old piece around your own home that you can update and anyone can do this. For this next furniture makeover, I was looking for a way to make some console tables for our basement. So we shopped my parents' basement. Yes, we have lots of furniture down there. And we're going to use this dining table and benches. We've already used the tabletop to make the folding table in my parents' laundry room. So we're going to use the legs from the table and the bench tops to make two console tables. And the best part is this project is absolutely free. So we started by using the legs of the table and cut them in half down the center and straightened out the feet. And these are gonna be the new legs for each console table. We also just used the table saw to cut some of the bulk off so the leg wouldn't protrude farther than the actual table top. We also used some scrap wood from another furniture makeover that we're gonna get to later in this video to help us build the tables up a little bit. I wanted them to have the finished height as our sectional. We also added on another piece to the top of the legs to give a little bit more support for the table tops for the console tables. And to finish off the legs, we applied a couple coats of white track paint and then finished them off with a layer of wax for some protection. To make the tabletop for these console tables, we took the wood bench tops off of the bench base and we gave them a light sanding. They were pretty dinged up as well. This also took off uh, the varnish that was on there. We started with a layer of pre-stained wood conditioner to help prevent any splotchiness and help the stain to soak into the wood evenly. Then we applied a thin coat of stain and let that penetrate into the wood for about 15 minutes. After that, we took a lint-free cloth and just wiped off any excess stain that was still remaining, and then we allowed it to completely dry. 
Then we applied a wax top coat for some protection and to distress it a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is pick up a little bit of the dark wax and kind of blend it here. And then I'm just going to work it into the wood. Once the wax has completely dried, we're just using our power buffer to buff off any excess wax. Now you don't need one of these. It is pretty handy. It goes quickly, but you can just use a lint-free cloth and just rub with your hands as well. Then we used two and a half inch screws and secured the top of the legs to the underneath side of the tabletop. And I'm securing them in a diagonal fashion just a little bit to make sure that my leg doesn't wiggle around. Then I went through a second time to tighten the, everything up. And here's a look at the completed sofa tables. All of the supplies we used from the paint, the wax, the stain, everything we had on hand. So this really was a completely free project and I love the fact that we kind of just reimagined some unused furniture and transformed it into something else that worked for our needs. So hopefully this inspires you guys to um, come up with some solutions with some old furniture, maybe just sitting around your own home or some pieces you have found at your thrift stores or Facebook marketplace. We're going to show you a fun no sew um, upholstery project and it is done completely without any sewing at all so we will show you how easy it is to do and you guys if you've been afraid to try upholstery work in the past once you see this you're gonna go hmm, I you could do you it. can do it you so, can do it here we go all right the first thing we're gonna do is remove the piping or the cording that is around the ottoman once that is all removed you can begin taking out all of the staples and you just go around the whole chair removing all the staples. It does take a little bit of time, but this is probably the hardest part of this project, which isn't really hard. It just takes a little bit of time. So just turn up your work music and have some fun and get this part done. And this next step is optional, but we like to put a nice fresh coat of batting on and tack it into place with just about three staples on each side just to hold it into place. You don't need very many staples in at this point. You're going to measure your fabric um, just long enough that it will cover the wood. So you can see here that it's hanging over the wood about two to three inches around the whole ottoman here. And there's a nice shot at the groove where we're gonna need to insert all of the staples to secure the fabric. So what you'll do is start in the middle and put one staple in the middle and then one on each end towards the legs. This will just hold it into place. So do this on the front and then the back side and then you'll do it also on the sides. Um, so you're gonna want a lot of staples in there. So go ahead and fill in all the space around all four edges of the ottoman, leaving about one to two inches unstapled towards the corner. This will give you a little bit of wiggle room to work on that corner. And somehow we forgot to film our corners, so please forgive us. We ended up actually bringing up the matching chair that went with the ottoman, and we are showing you the corner on the chair. So bear with us, it's the same exact shape of the wood. You can see here, um, like the groove right above the shape where we're gonna have to staple. So it's the same corner. What you're gonna do is put a staple right in the center of the corner. And like I say, this was a deep groove, so it was kind of hard to get it to even stick in there with our pneumatic staple gun. So we had to try a few times. Um, once you do that, for this corner, the fur fabric is a little bit forgiving. So we just pulled it towards the left here and folded it over and then put another staple on top. So it kind of made it um, pleated a little bit. We did that on the left side and then the right. And then we made sure to secure the corner really well with a lot of staples so that it wouldn't come undone. Once all of the corners have been stapled, the rest of the ottoman stapled, you'll just go ahead and trim off the excess fabric 
trimming as close to the staples as you can and then we're attaching the piping. This is our last step. So using a hot glue gun, super easy to do. We just stuck some glue right on the end to prevent any fraying from happening. And then you're just gonna go around the whole piece of furniture and apply your piping right over that um, deep groove area where we have stapled all of the fabric. Don't you just love the way this chic and stylish ottoman turned out? We love it. Wasn't that a fun project? And well, doesn't it look easy? Something like that you could actually do yourself. I so, think we spent like five bucks on the batting and 10 on the fabric. Yeah, so not bad, not bad. For the next couple of makeovers, they will be from a room makeover that we did for my granddaughter, Ellie. All right, guys, we found the cutest chair on our local classifieds. It's really old and can't, what did the sign say? It's a Louis 15th chair, it says. I don't know, but it's really cute. It's got nice curvy lines. It'll go really great in Ellie's bedroom makeover. It is very, very wobbly. And of course the fabric is torn and yuck anyway, but we are going to refinish this and you are going to love it. Once I was able to get all of the um, upholstery tacks off, I used the same tool to pull the little nails off that were holding the upholstery in place. We've decided that we need to remove this fabric as well. And so you can see there's little teeny nails holding it on. So I'm just gonna use this painter's tool to get underneath the nails and pop them off. And under here we've got the springs. But this is revealed here where the wood's connected and you can see where it's loose now. So we're just going to have to glue this and put some screws in that to tighten it up. We're going to put some um, wood glue in here between this joint that's come loose here. And then I have pre-drilled some holes down here and we're going to just insert some screws and secure this back together. Then we put the chair pad back into place and added a clean piece of batting and stapled that into place and trimmed the excess. So I've taken the old fabric that we took off. We're gonna kind of use that as a pattern. I will cut it about three inches, three to four inches larger than what the actual fabric is. I placed the fur over the seat of the chair. I'm now ready to staple down the fur and you can see right here there's a little ridge where the wood is and we want to get that staple as close to that ridge as we can. So I'm going to pull the fabric and take the nail gun or the staple gun and push it down so it's on that ridge and then fire. Just like the ottoman we put a few staples in both the front and back, made sure it was tight, and then pulled the fabric and did the sides to hold it into place. Then we went around the entire chair and um, put staples all around the entire chair. The only difference here with this fabric, this fur, <laughs> was we had to lift up the pieces of fur before we drove the staples in because we didn't want the fur to be caught underneath that. It was just gonna ruin the look we were going for. But what I'm gonna do now is just brush all of the fur upward and because I don't wanna trim this. I wanna just trim what is below the staples. So I'm gonna just push all of the fur up and then trim off the fabric. We also stapled the fabric into place on the back of the chair. And then this way, it was a little bit harder to get the scissors into place, so we used a utility knife to cut off that excess fabric. And our final step will be adding the cording. Just like on the ottoman, we're gonna use hot glue to tack this all around where we stapled the fabric into place. All right, we've got the chair in Ellie's room. We're gonna surprise her and see how she likes it. Okay, come on, Ellie. <laughs> what do you think? Awesome. You love it? Yeah. Is it so soft and cozy? Yeah. Yeah? Gonna do lots of schoolwork right here? Yeah. And artwork? And Aiden won't bug me anymore. I hope not. And it's huge. Yes. Just what you need for all your art projects, huh? I just wanted to show you some of the details of this cute chair all finished. I love the legs and the fur on it. I think it's so adorable. 
And I love that we used this jute, natural jute trim around the edges. And we did something maybe a little bit unexpected, but we left the back unfinished, just like a, a true deconstructed piece from Restoration Hardware. So let us know what you think about this cute chair. Now let's move on to the dresser. Here's the cute dresser we found. I loved the curves on it. You can see when we open the drawer, it curves out. So it just has that nice French touch to it. It does have kind of a not very good paint job on it. You can see all those brush lines and things. So we are actually going to try a different method today. We decided to go for that raw wood finish on this dresser, so we're going to use citrus strip. This is our very first time using this um, product to strip paint, and we're gonna apply it and use it just like we did on that vanity top in our first furniture makeover. Remember, this is our first time using this citrus strip, and I want you to take a look down here. We have covered it with saran wrap because I wanted it to sit nice and long before we came to it. So I'm gonna pull this off and look at that. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. It's gonna be so easy to strip this dresser. Oh my gosh, I've never stripped anything so easy in my life. Wow, Holy that's cow. awesome. Oh, apparently we had some nice round knobs on there one time. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. I think I should be doing a paid video for such a strip because <laughs> I'm loving this. Wow. Holy cow. And this there's is, no smell. This is the easiest strip job I have ever done. We did have to work at getting that paint off on the actual dresser just a little bit more, but overall it went pretty smoothly. Then we took our sander to everything to finish getting off any remaining paint and followed up with a 220 grit to get that nice smooth finish. We decided to bleach this dresser just to get a more natural, lighter wood finish. So we are using Zinsser wood bleach today. You do have to be really careful with this product because it can cause a chemical reaction if you do it wrong. But basically you apply part A, let it sit for the amount of recommended time and then apply part B and then it takes a little bit of time for that reaction to happen. But look at this result. The top is unbleached, the bottom piece is bleached. It really took that red tone out that I was not loving and now it is gorgeous. To maintain that beautiful wood finish we just uncovered, we're going to use a clear wax to protect it. And at first I was a little bit nervous because it was changing the color of the wood after all that bleaching, but once it dried, it was fine. We just buffed it with our rag. See, the color is still there. Here's a quick look at the dresser, what we started with, and here is the after. What do you guys think? Sometimes it's fun to bring a dresser back to its original beauty and take off all that paint. The next couple of projects are dupes. We love recreating that high-end look that we're always gawking over from like Pottery Barn or Restoration Hardware. And we know we can recreate it at a fraction of the cost. We are here in Little Miss's room doing the very next project in her room, which is a French day bed that we're working on. So we're gonna show you what we purchased on the Facebook Marketplace. We purchased um, two French style twin beds that we are going to turn into a true French day bed. And so you'll see here that we've stripped the wood and prepped it um, for waxing. Right here we did not strip the wood because strip the finish off we're going to upholster this part, so it didn't really need to be done. We are going to apply a clear wax to this part of the wood that we have stripped the paint off, the wood. And we're gonna apply this clear wax because we love the color that we're getting of this natural wood. And now I'm going to take some white wax. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna work it into these grooved, the details area. Just kind of work that in there. 
This just removes any excess wax so it's not sticky. It does give your piece just a little bit of a sheen. The first step to upholstering the bed is to cover the wood with some foam. We decided to get these mattress toppers. We got them at Walmart. Uh, full size was about $13. It's just a lot cheaper than getting foam at the fabric store. So that's our little tip on that. So we have lined it up. So you can see that that is the topper. And we are just going to use a Sharpie, kind of fill where the wood is and make a little template. And we're gonna have this go in about half an inch inside the wood frame that we have waxed. This doesn't need to be perfect, but the pattern will just help us get it close to the shape. And tack it down with a couple staples. We're going to mark center on our batting so that we know where to line our stripes up so that our fabric is actually straight. Now we can easily line up the stripe to the Sharpie mark we have put. And we're going to tack that down with our staple gun. We used the same steps as we've done on our other upholstery pieces. The only real difference with this one was that we were using this striped pattern, so we did have to be careful and pull the fabric the, all the way around so we didn't end up with wavy stripes. And again, we finished off this raw edge with this natural colored cording. The original side rails to this bed were straight, but now that we turned the bed sideways to make it a day bed, I transferred the same design from the footboard to the front rail and cut it out with a jigsaw. Edges are not perfect by any means, and they're not smooth, but we are going to fix that with the sander. My mom's laughing in the background. Rude. <laughs> And we are going to route the edges and it's gonna be beautiful. You just watch and see. Now we're gonna show you how we connected, the, how we're going to connect the headboards. So the headboard had little legs on it so that it would be up as high as the footboard. We cut those off since we're going to mount it on top of the footboard. So what we're gonna do is just hook it just the original way that it came. So we have the headboards now connected to the two sideboards. And what we're going to do is just lift them up and set them on top of the lower baseboard pieces. And then we are going to connect them with a mending plate. That will be our next thing we do. All right, here's the finished bed. I cannot believe how fun this is. It turned out so cute. I love this natural wood finish that we have here. This cute ticking fabric really makes it just look antique. It almost looks like it was always meant to be upholstered too. I just love the way it turned out. And you wouldn't even know that it was two twin beds before. It just looks like a true French day bed. Is this project something that you would consider tackling? It was really kind of fun to just reimagine and make it how it would benefit us and look at that cost savings. All right, let's move on to another dupe. I really loved the look of this St. James panel bed from Restoration Hardware, but with the configurations of the size I needed and the finish I liked, there was no way I was going to spend that much money. So we're gonna use a bed that's been sitting down in my basement and I know we can recreate this look for a fraction of the cost. This is just a canning jar that we have filled with vinegar and a steel wool pad. Bring it a little closer here. You can see that the steel wool pad has pretty much disintegrated and this is going to make the um, bed kind of look aged and worn a little bit, kind of gives it a gray tone. So right at first, it's just going to look like the bed is wet, but the longer it sits, it will gray. So 
So this is the original shade we started with and with one swipe of that stain, we let it penetrate into the wood and this is the color that our pine bed turned to. Isn't that crazy? Okay, I am just so excited with the way this is turning out. I had to turn the camera back on and give you a little bit of a sneak peek. So look how awesome it is, how the wax really gets into those grooves, the knots. While she's doing that, I'll come up here and show you where we've already done the streaking with the other brush. And then here's this side where we haven't applied the wax yet. It is a huge difference. And you know the drill by now, once that wax is finished drying, you'll buff it with a rag or a buffer like this. And I had the cutest little helper this day. And here's a look at the completed bed. This is one of the reasons why we love DIYing so much because sometimes simple changes can bring great results. Now, we were able to have a huge amount of savings on this project. We got a very similar look and so it's a great bang for your buck and we love it so much and we hope you do too. I can't even get over how much money we saved on this dupe. For this next dupe, I really loved the clean lines on this reed platform bed from Pottery Barn, but I wasn't about to spend $1,200. So I scoured the classifieds to find something we could use to get a similar look. I found this bed for only $50. It's solid wood, which was a huge plus, and this makeover is going to be huge. This actually ended up being a two-part series here on our channel, so if you wanna go check out those full episodes, they'll be listed down below. The first thing we did was lowered the height of the legs to get more of this platform look. Okay, so the chalk line did give us a good idea of where we're gonna cut this off. So we're just gonna mark that on both legs just to know that everything's the same height and we'll cut these pieces off. Shazam! Awesome. I was so glad the chop saw did this and we didn't have to rip out the table saw. Wow, you guys. It is it, way more rustic than I thought we knew. But we did decide to use the back of the headboard just because it's a lot more smooth and clean lines where the front was just so, warps not even the right word. It was just so textured that it just was not even flat. So the next step was to create that nice streamlined look for the top of the headboard. So we're using our circular saw to cut off all those curved edges. So we brought the bed in just to kind of get a good idea of the progress we've made so far, give you an idea of how it's gonna look in this room. You can see it's just a lot more simple clean lines and it goes a lot better with this modern look that we're going for. We did decide to make new side rails from scratch just to get some better straight edges to work with. So we're just cutting those to length and installing the hardware from the existing rails onto these new boards. So just to finish it off, we're gonna put some cap boards on the footboard, side rails, and the headboard. And we're gonna tack these in with some brad nails, put some wood glue on it. And we repeat the same process with the headboard. Okay, we've made a pencil line so we know where to shoot our brad nails so that we don't go outside of our three quarter inch board. And do both ends first. Step can run them down the center. And if you're still watching, thank you so much. You are a true DIYer at heart. We are almost finished with this build and appreciate you sticking around till the end. We've used this wood filler on most of the bed where there were just small little holes to fill in. Then we're gonna use Bondo to straighten out the bottom edge of the footboard. You can really see here how much Bondo I actually had to use to create that straight edge. I also used it on the legs of the bed where they were really, really textured to get a nice smooth finish and any other larger dings or detailed areas in the headboard. Then I sanded everything smooth and we are left with 
the basic simple clean lines as the pottery barn bed. I did want to originally stain this piece to get the look we were going for but because we had to bring in some new wood and also the bondo we were left with the option of painting the bed and we're creating this faux wood finish and i think you guys are gonna love this technique so we've been practicing and practicing this cool old not old but rifted oak technique and we've got these fun flappy brushes and we finally figured it out and we're excited to show you today we started by priming the bed to block any of those natural tannins that can bleed through the paint and then we moved forward with painting everything with this kind of a lighter wood tone base color. We also used this wood graining tool to create a little bit more of this wood texture since we are doing this painted finish we still want it to look like a stained piece of wood when we're finished. After the paint dried, we mixed up some of our water-based wood stain and some glaze to extend the working time. And this is where things are gonna get really fun. Art is coming up after we get the glaze on. Okay, and I'm using a paintbrush. This is a cheap paintbrush that we picked up at Walmart. And what's good about it is the bristles are stiff. And so it's gonna give us this streaky look that we really wanted to have which makes it seem more like grain. You'll want to apply this stain mixture in long, even strokes to mimic what a natural wood would look like. And then I'm gonna use my big floppy brush and we're gonna do this technique called flogging. You're just gonna keep that brush moving and tap, tap, tap all the way down. And it's gonna create that same effect and look as rifted oak. I was loving this look so much, but I still wanted to add another layer of dimension. So we are going to use a watered down paint mixture with white paint and also glaze and do this exact same method over the entire bed. Once that was dry, we applied a clear matte top coat with that same triple thick varathane polyurethane. Finally finished. This particular makeover took a long time just because we were trying to figure out how to make the bed work, cutting it all down to size, making it look the same as the pottery barn bed. And then we had to do the learning of this faux wood paint finish. But overall, we love the way it looked and we hope this inspires you to maybe think outside the box, use your creativity and reimagine a piece of furniture that you already have or you know, recreate that high-end look and work on your own furniture dupe. You've got this. Now let's talk about those savings. The Pottery Barn bed retails for $2,000 and by purchasing the bed online for 50 bucks and a little bit of uh, money spent toward materials, we spent a whopping $90. For this next dupe, I was totally drawn to this Dolores Kane desk that was on the Pottery Barn website, and I wasn't about to spend $1,500 for it, and I knew that we could recreate it to get a very similar look. Here's a look at this desk we found on the Facebook Marketplace. Again, it was free, so we kind of lucked out with that, but it really had similar lines to this Pottery Barn desk that we were inspired by. And to recreate this look, we needed to remove this left bank of drawers. This is definitely one of the more interesting cuts we've ever made, <laughs> but it did the trick and we were able to secure the straight edge into place and make the same cut on the inside of the desk. Then we were able to just simply lift this section off and flip the desk back over and get working on other parts. Here's another look at the desk from Pottery Barn so we can compare the progress that we're making. Then we sanded down the entire desk to prep it for stain, applied a couple coats of this beautiful black ebony stain and then once everything was dry we applied three coats of wipe on poly to give it a lot of protection. Now let's move on to the drawers. So first we filled in all of the holes and chipped areas with wood putty. 
And then once it had dried, we sanded each with an orbital sander. Then we painted the drawer fronts with some black paint to cover the putty marks and then stapled on some caning to add that beautiful rattan finish. And finally, to cover the raw edges of the rattan, we cut strips of oak screen molding and secured them to the drawer fronts with wood glue and two inch brads. We filled in the nail holes and seams with wood putty and sanded smooth when it was dry. And we finished them off with a matte top coat. We also created a faux drawer front on that left side where we removed all of the drawers and secured it into place with a pocket hole. We also used the pocket hole jig to assemble our legs for this desk and painted them black to give us that metal look like our Pottery Barn inspiration. Here's a quick reminder of what our desk looked like before we got started. It was in pretty sad shape and a quick look at our inspiration piece again and our final desk makeover. We couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. We love the way it looks and we love the way that the rattan actually pulls some of that color in from the floor as well. So what do you think? Do you see yourself making something like this for your own home? This makeover cost just under $100 and the original Pottery Barn desk goes for $1,500. So there's no comparison to the amount of savings we had with this dupe. Next up, I really loved the look of this mango wood dining table from Pottery Barn. It retails for $3,200, but I was also looking for a coffee table, not a dining table. So I found a similar look in a coffee table at Target that retails for $800, which was a lot better than Pottery Barn cost, but I still felt like we could recreate this look for a lot less. I found this dining table on the Facebook Marketplace for $200. It was really in great condition. I just didn't like the color, so we plan to strip it down to the natural color, shorten the legs, and make our coffee table. Sometimes it can be tricky to know if a piece of furniture you're working with is solid wood or not. And so rather than just starting with the sander, we tried to take off the finish of the table first because we weren't sure if we were working with a veneer and we didn't want to sand through that. With the finish removed, it was just way too textured and rustic for my liking. So we did sand it down and it turned out to be solid wood, which was a bonus. Then we used a pre-stain wood conditioner so that we would get a nice, even staining without any blotchiness and wiped that excess stain away. To achieve a weathered and worn finish for this round coffee table top, we first applied a coat of clear wax to the wood. And then you can apply the white wax to the tabletop with a waxing brush. With this white layer, we decided to go with the grain of the wood just to help create that streaking effect and really give us that aged wood look that we were going for. We cut the legs down to height for a coffee table, sanded them smooth, and we also cut a crossbar piece for a little bit extra stability. To attach the crossbar piece, we applied a little bit of wood glue on the bottom of each leg and then we made pilot holes with the drill and secured it into place with some two inch screws. Then we aligned the crossbar piece with the clamp while we inserted two pocket hole screws. And of course we added this to the legs as well just to make the whole table cohesive and match really well. And here is a look at our finished coastal farmhouse style coffee table. I'm super happy with the way it turned out and I actually think the little crossbar that we added on the bottom really helps tie the whole look together as well. So it was kind of like a happy accident. And I'm super glad that we were able to sand off some of that texture as well. It was just super busy for me. So I am just so, so happy. And you can see those little details in the wood now that were hidden with that dark finish before. So 
It's almost like it was meant to be like this all along. I just love it so much. And let's talk about those savings. That Pottery Barn inspiration piece retails for $3,200 and we spent 200. So you cannot beat that. For this next dupe, I really loved this dresser from West Elm. It retails for $1,200 and I knew we could get this same look for a lot less. So we're going to use an old dresser that my great grandpa built over 60 years ago it's had a couple of makeovers over the years and it's time for another refresh. Our plan is to um, cover the front of these uh, drawers with some cane and put a little trim around it to kind of modernize it. We're also removing the dresser top so that we can cut the sides down to get a more clean and modern look. We just set up the fence on the saw and ran each of the sides through and it took that decorative edge off which really just helped make this look a lot more modern. Then we removed the existing drawer handles. With those removed, we are just scuff sanding the drawer fronts a little bit. We are using an 80 grit just to take it down a little bit quicker. And we're just removing um, any brush marks from the previous paint job, just smoothing things out. So we'll get a nice smooth finish with this new look that we're going for. Okay, we had some chipping that was along the bottom of the dresser. We're using Bondo to fill in all those imperfections and this will sand so smooth and give us a beautiful finish for painting. All right, we have got this all prepped now and we're ready to reattach our top. So we're just going to add some wood glue and then we'll place our top back on and then just shoot a couple of brads up in it. Then we painted everything black to mimic that inspiration dresser from West Elm. I found the cane we're gonna use on Amazon and I tried to find just enough that would do our project without having too much waste because this can be spendy. I got this uh, 24 width by five feet for about 50 bucks. First, we're gonna do a rough cut to size, and then to use cane a little bit easier, we're gonna soak it in the bathtub for a few minutes. This will just make it a little bit more pliable and easier to work with. Now that the cane is wet, it doesn't have that tendency to roll closed anymore, so you can lay it out on top of a drawer. And we're gonna cut this down to size. You can hear me over the air compressor, but pretty much you want to make sure that you get every part of the weave stapled down. That's really important because you don't want one little piece coming out and the whole thing could unravel. Look how much more elevated and modern this looks already, just having the cane on. And obviously we're not done because we're going to cover all the staples, but I'm so glad that we didn't have to fill in this gap either. And you know, where the knobs were, it doesn't look great, but you can't even tell. Just having it painted black underneath did the trick. Can't see those grooves at all. To get a nice clean look around the edges, we painted some screen molding black, cut them to size, and we're gonna just apply those to the edges of the drawers to give it that nice finished look. Now we're placing a piece of tape everywhere we're going to drive a brad, and this is gonna help save us time with the finish work because it's going to let us have a cleaner finish with the wood filler, and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Then we secured each piece of molding into place with our brad nailer. We're going to use this plastic wood, just going to press it into that little nail hole through the tape. And once this dries and we remove it, we have so much less area to sand yeah, by just doing makes this. It lots less work. Well, yeah, it just saves you some time in the whole cleanup. Then you'll use a 220 grit or a 400 and just lightly go over those filled in brad areas. I also caulked around the edges of the drawers to help create a seamless look. And we finished the drawers off with a second coat of paint, followed by a clear top coat. I found these new modern legs on Amazon, so we're just gonna get these installed. 
I got all four feet for 15 bucks, so that is such a great price. You couldn't pass it up. I did change the feet from our inspo dresser just because I liked it a little better. So that's the beauty of DIY. And here she is in all her glory. Can you even believe that this is the same dresser? I kind of wonder if my great grandpa is like rolling over in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> that we did this to the dresser he built or if he's like yeah you girls do what you want to do because he did build a ton of furniture he they were not very well to do and this was just something he did to help them have what they needed so I kind of think he would be proud of us and fine with what we did but I really love the way it turned out I love the clean modern lines I love the cane on the front. It made such a huge difference to the overall look of this dresser. And check out that savings. West Elm's dresser retails for $1,200 and we spent $100. This next furniture makeover was too good to pass up, but sadly, this was before we started filming our projects. So we're gonna share this one with you using pictures. So I found this table on the side of the road one morning on my walk and it had a sticker that said free. So I'm like, yes, please. Turned around, went and got the car and loaded it up. You can see that it is in sad shape. I think somebody must have refinished it with a chalk paint or a chalk type paint, but didn't seal it. And that is what happens when you don't like apply a wax or a top coat to chalk paint. It just isn't good. The top was sticky. When my kids would do the homework at the table, it would transfer the pencil to the table, so it was a mess. After a while, I just couldn't handle it anymore, so nine o'clock at night, one day, I just on a whim started stripping the paint off because I couldn't handle it. So that is the first thing I did to get all the paint off. I did use like a little scraper tool and some steel wool to really get in the crevices and then I also finished it with a sander just to get all the paint off. So I did get everything off which was great but I didn't love the color of the wood. So I decided to bleach it like we did with that dresser makeover. Again just applying part A and then part B following all of the instructions. The bleaching worked awesome. It took all that yellowy tone out that I didn't like. And then I just gave it a light sanding because working with that wood bleach raises the wood grain so it's a little bit rough to the touch. So I gave it a sanding with a 220 grit. And then I applied a little bit of wood stain. This is in the color Sun Bleached by Verithane and let that um, fully cure. And then I applied this um, triple thick polyurethane, which is in a clear matte finish. I didn't love the legs that came with this table, so I actually found this brown table on the classifieds for 50 bucks. The top was damaged, but I loved the legs. So we used the legs and painted them white and put them on this new tabletop that we refinished and this is the final product. And I really love the way it turned out. I love having a little bit of paint to give it that farmhouse fill, but having that wood top just really helps bring in a little bit of that natural element that I like. So what do you guys think? Next up, we're going to give this dated hutch a makeover. Let's take a look at this china cabinet before it was painted. It does have that fun cottage vibe, but it was a little bit too distressed for my mom's liking and the finish just started to feel a little bit dirty to her. So she does love the hardware cloth in the door panels and the beadboard backing for that farmhouse feel. So she'll be keeping those details and the original hardware is painted. So she's going to freshen that up a little bit too. So first up, we gave it a good cleaning with TSP. This helps remove any like grease or grime so that we can get a better bond with the paint and we also removed this metal just to make painting a little bit easier. Then we used black chalk paint. Uh, we used a brush in the back of the beadboard in any detailed areas and then we used a foam roller for the larger surfaces to get that nice smooth finish. Prior to painting the second coat we like to take a fine 
220 grit sandpaper and just lightly go over the paint just to make sure it has a nice smooth surface and this just gives it a nice quality finish when you're done. Then we're ready for the second coat of paint. Now distressing your cabinet is always optional. We do like to add a little bit of distressing. This just adds in a little bit of that aging character to the piece. And if you look closely at this china cabinet, you can see the wood itself has tiny holes to simulate aged and vintage wood. After the second layer of um, paint was dry, we applied the clear wax, again, just to give that protection. You don't want anything to happen with your new painted piece, like my dining table. Oh my gosh, it was a mess. So be sure to seal your projects. Then you'll buff it with a soft, clean cotton cloth. And you can see here in the video that it just gives it a little bit of a soft sheen. We did want to keep the original hardware, but you can see it was covered in that same yellow paint. So we're gonna just put it on the stove top and let it simmer for a minute until you can see the paint starting to peel away. And then you can just take a scrub brush and the paint will literally just fall off. We're then taking some Rub and Buff in the antique gold color to give it more of a gold finish than that bronze. And we're just gonna do that on all the pieces and put them back on. And this is the finished touch. We really love the way it turned out. You know, the original finish had more of that um, farmhouse look, but it did kind of start to feel a little bit dated. So we're still having that farmhouse look with um, the beadboard in the back and the actual textures of this wood, but having a black finish gives it a little bit more of that modern touch. Next up, we're going to reimagine and make over this old dated hutch top. We picked up this hutch top a little while ago, but we couldn't pass up the price. It was only $5 and it was in really great shape, but it was not really my style. And so we're gonna give it a little bit of a refresh. The top of this hutch is going to need some lumber. It just has the molding going around the edge. And so I bought some select pine boards um, to go over the top, but we do need to glue two boards together. We had created pocket holes on one of the boards with our Craig jig, and we'll link that product down below. That is a fabulous tool if you need to combine boards together. The boards were slightly warped, and so Steph's gonna push down and keep the boards level while I insert the screws into each of those pocket holes and we're going to let the glue cure for about 24 hours. Now we're going to rip the board down to the width of the hutch, and we're using our rip cut jig, which is fantastic. It makes it so much easier to do. And then we're also going to cut it to the right length, so it fits the top of that hutch just perfectly.
Usually we would take the doors off of a piece, but this piece is so old and the screws were kind of corroded, we could not get them off. So we're just going for it. I've already painted the shelves and now I want to give the shelves a really durable finish. So I'm going to use this top coat and I'm going to apply two coats to each of the shelves. And since we painted the cabinet in chalk paint, we need to protect that as well. And I'm going to just use a clear wax. Instead of buying new hardware for this piece, we're going to just clean up the old with some Barkeeper's Friend. Once the hardware was cleaned up, I was pretty coppery in color, which really wasn't going to go with the look I wanted. So I'm going to get, again take that antique gold rub and buff and I'm going to apply it to the hardware with a stiff bristled brush. I ordered this peel and stick wallpaper off of Amazon. It was fairly easy, easy to apply. I just needed a smoothing tool and then pulled down the backing as I worked and smoothed it out as I went. I found these cute furniture legs on Amazon and they were really the inspiration for this entire piece. Once I found the cute French styled legs, I felt like the cabinet needed that style too. They were really simple to install you just need to pre-drill some pilot holes and then uh, attach the, the legs with the included screws If you've been following along for any time at all, you know we love thrifting and vintage finds and it's all really in the hunt, but we have quite the fun piece today that we are going to transform and you are not going to believe this makeover. Take a look at this cute chair, you guys. We found this at the vintage market that they do annually here in our area and we actually really loved the rust to it and that distressed look, but we quickly realized that the rust transferred to your clothes. So that wasn't gonna work anymore. As you can see, my rusty garden furniture needed prep work before we could paint. Now my sweet husband is not really a fan of painting or refinishing furniture. He'll do a lot of projects with me or for me, but this is not one he usually will volunteer to help with. However, with my busy schedule, he offered to use the grinder to remove the rust. Clearly, I wasn't going to turn him down with his offer. And he was able to remove the chipping paint and rust. After we had removed all of the chipping paint and rust, we used a damp cloth to wipe down the chair. Now, if you decide that you do not need to sand or grind your rusty garden furniture, be sure to clean your piece well before applying the rust reformer. This will ensure that the primer and the paint will adhere well to your surface. While there are many spray paints with primer, from my experience, when working with rusty furniture of any type, you want to use a product that will stop the rust from spreading. And that is exactly what this product um, from Rust-Oleum Rust does. It converts the rusty area um, on your furniture to a protected paintable surface. 
After the rust reformer had cured, we moved on to painting. And we just used paint and primer in one since we already had that rust reformer on there. That should be good to go. And we just gave the chair an entire coating and did two coats. And for the chair handles and legs, we decided to give it a little bit of a contrast with this black. Now that the chair is completely dry, we wanted to help these embossed areas really stand out. So we've masked everything off and we're gonna spray them black just so they can actually shine and have their moment on that before image. You really couldn't even tell that there was this design in the chair. So this is gonna be super cute. Isn't this so much fun? I love it. It's almost like a brand new piece of furniture now, but it has that vintage character to it. And it's, you know, painted good now and it's not rusty and it will last for years to come. And you can sit in it without rust getting on your clothes. <laughs> yes. It was kind of in sad shape, even yes. though I love that rust, but it's transformed now. We hope you like this transformation just as much as we did. What do you guys think? What colors would you have done? All right, this is the project we are working today on today. We picked up these bar stools. I picked up three of them at the thrift store. I paid $12 for these chairs at the Restore store up in Park City. And we believe that these probably came from either Restoration Hardware or Pottery Barn. And they probably were pretty pricey chairs to begin with. So they are in rough shape and we're gonna show you how we're gonna transform them. Just like all of the other upholstery pieces we've shared in this video, we first started by removing all of the cording, peeling off all of this fabric, removing the staples, getting it ready for the new fabric. Okay, so we're gonna do this together. I'm gonna paint on the front side. Steph is gonna paint on the back side. She's gonna catch any runs that come through and you can see on my front side that she's pushing paint through as well. So it's, it works we're working together. together. Working together, getting it both. I'm just gonna kind of cut in around the edge first. There it is. A little spin, should we turn it the other way as well? Yep. And we'll let this dry and then we'll be on our next, next step. step. We're just going to apply this white wax, which is gonna get into the grooves and the details. And this wood has um, kind of a, a rougher grain to it, so it's gonna really accept that wax. Then we quickly buffed the um, wood and we're on to our poultry. We added a fresh piece of batting, stapled it into place in a couple of spots. Then we used the existing chair cover as a pattern and cut our fabric about three inches larger. Um, a Sharpie mark that I've marked center. Um, because we've got a definite pattern on our fabric, it's a stripe and I wanna make sure that it's even on both sides. I've marked center on the front and the back of the chair. So I'll have a spot to line up my fabric on. I'll place it on here. I, used my pattern from the, what we took off it, and I've cut slits where there were slits that's going to go around the wood. So we're gonna tuck those back in there. I want to make sure that I've got my center black stripe lined up with the center of that Sharpie line. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back, make sure it's lined up in the center. Then we secured the front into place with a couple of staples and did the same on the back side to make sure that our pattern wasn't going to wobble around and everything was lined up great. Okay, but I've trimmed it a little bit. I'm gonna tuck that inside there again. Make a fold here. Pull that down to the side. Then the fabric was nice and smooth so we were able to staple it all into place. We continued adding staples all around the chair up until the front corners and we'll show you how we made those perfect. What we're going to do is just tuck this in like you think of you're wrapping a present. Pull Keep it, it in. nice and flat. And then, then we pulled that front one on top and then secured staples through all the layers of the fabric. Nice. Get a nice neat corner yep. that way. And to finish it off, we applied this same natural cording all the way around the chair. You guys can tell that we like this, right? <laughs> With all of this upholstery work we've done in this video. I didn't realize how much upholstery we had done until I'm putting this video together, but you really can save a lot of money learning how to do this yourself. And it's not really that difficult. So this is the finished look. What do you guys think? It's definitely a huge improvement from what we started with. 
after seeing all these upholstery projects, do you guys feel confident that you could tackle it now too? It is a little intimidating your first time, I'm not gonna lie, but once you do it, it's really not that hard. So you can absolutely do it. Next up, I found this worn coffee table on the classifieds for about 50 bucks. I loved the size and details of the table, but hated the finish. So we're going to give this piece a lighter coastal look. First, we started by taking the table apart so it was a little bit easier to work with and painted the entire table white. And I'm gonna show you what we're using today. We're using a glaze, um, and then we're gonna use just regular acrylic paint, our favorite brand here, Bear. We're gonna use one part of paint to four parts of glaze. And so we've taken that and put them in a bucket, and we're just gonna combine those so that Should it is all here. mixed here. So it's so nice, you can kind of see the consistency. It's kind we of have runny. a little bit runny. And we're going to paint it on with a brush and wipe it off with a rag. Simple as that. So we're going to paint one section or one um, piece of wood here, plank. plank of wood here at a time. So you can see that the table's it's a little bit grayer than the normal white, but you can see where the gray it's, really seeped into those deep grooves yeah, of wood. You can just see in the grooves that it's a little bit darker and it's going to accentuate the texture that's already on this table. I just wanted to show you close up the detail that we're getting here with the glaze. So it really highlights all the grooves in the wood and just gives it some extra dimension. And You can see the grooves are full of that dark color now and it really so. accentuates all of the carvings. Again, once everything is dry, we're going to seal it all up with a clear coat of wax. Now normally you don't need to seal like a latex paint which we used, but that glaze we used does need a top coat, otherwise that can just wash away. And finally, we gave it a quick buffing. Look, we've put the coffee table back together, decorated it up with some of my cute coastal decor. I love how beachy it looks now, and it's not dark brown anymore. I love all these little details that we got. Um, the darker was from the sanding, and there's my four-year-old. Thank you so much. Just say hi really fast. Hi. Okay. And then you can see the gray, the darker gray, that's where we did the glaze on top of the white. So that's how we got all of those different colors in there but it looks really cool. It looks very beachy now and coastal. Love it. Today we are going to use a method using salt wash to transform this um, console table into a nice coastal, airy, beachy look. I picked it up on our local classifieds for $40, so you couldn't beat that price. We are going to just give this piece a light sanding just to get rid of some of that sheen. Uh, the next step we're going to do is the first layer of the salt wash. I'm just gonna pour my paint into my bucket here, and then when you stir in the salt wash, you're gonna want the batter, the batter. You guys, I cannot talk today. You're gonna want the consistency of your salt wash mixture to be like a thick cake batter or a frosting. To know if it's the right consistency is lifting up your stick and if it barely drips just like that, then you know that it's thick. And you're just going to apply it on your piece in a glob-like motion. And if you can see close enough, you can see that it has tall ridges and peaks. That is exactly what you're going for. I think anybody can do this. It's pretty simple to do. So much so that we had a cute little helper want to come and play too. <laughs> when it's kind of dried a little bit, this is kind of a tricky part to tell, but you'll just want to test with your brush. You're going to want to take your brush and just lightly go over your paint so it smooths down those high peaks. You still want them to be there. You just want the paint on your table to be more of a level surface. The table has dried. Now we're going to do a second layer with the dabbing motion with a couple of different colors. Also, pay attention to this brush here. It's pretty hashed. Um, if you're doing this method, make sure you use an older brush because 
it kind of beats it up. So your brush may look like that at the end if it's new. So be careful with that. So we're just gonna do this same process again. Um, you can do the entire surface again if you want, or you can just do it in a couple of different spots. And then during the final step of the project, you'll see what this is going to do. Look what a mess we've made, you guys. <laughs> this looks hideous. I know it does. It was kind of awkward painting it like this. We're just about to the part where the magic is gonna happen, but yes, I know it looks hideous, so it, it really does. But don't be scared. It's gonna turn out great. Again, we smoothed down the high peaks and ridges once the paint was almost dry and then let everything fully cure. And for this, you're just going to paint back and forth uh, against the grain of the wood, which you can't really see anymore, but you're gonna paint back and forth normally. No more dabbing it on. And let this layer of paint completely dry. Doesn't this table look so much better already? No more camouflage, it's a little less scary. And this is the step that's really gonna make this piece come to life and you'll see why we had all those colors underneath. Then you take a sander to the entire piece to reveal some of those under layers. And this gives it kind of that salty, worn and weathered finish. The original table has this faux glass front. So we have taken an old tray that's weaved. I found at the vintage store, painted them white and cut it to size. And we just stuck them in each of the drawer fronts and they fit pretty snug, so I didn't even need to use glue. And this is the final look. It does have a smooth finish because we sanded it with that 220. Um, and you can see all these layers of paint showing through to make it really have that aged and worn look, like it's been painted different colors over the years. Looking back on it though, I did this project several years ago. I probably would have just done the globbing paint motion with one paint color underneath and then the white on top. It's kind of busy to me now, but you live and learn, right? What do you guys think? Do you like all these colors or would you have done it on a more simplified version with just one color underneath? Again, these last two makeovers were just too good to pass up, but once again, we only have pictures to show you, but we hope you enjoy them, these makeovers, as much as we do. We were working on a car themed bedroom for my little guy and I came across this carpet protector that looked like that aluminum diamond plate material. And so we got a bunch of it. We're gonna put it on the headboard and footboard of the bed and also a dresser top. So what we did was just cut it down to size. It was easy to do with a knife or scissors. And then we rolled on this contact cement to both the cut um, carpet runner and the bed. Then we just pressed it into place and let it dry. It was really that easy and it made kind of this fun little design on this otherwise just plain black bed. So here's a look at the finished bed. Again, it just adds a little bit of texture and brings it to life for this themed car's bedroom. I also found this dresser look i mean it really was a filing cabinet but i found it for 15 dollars. it was solid wood i painted the top silver and the body of it red and then we again just applied that contact cement on the top surface and put that same carpet protector on the top and look how adorable it is it looks just like a tool chest we also did put on some large casters to prop it up a little bit and really make it look like a legit tool chest. What do you guys think of these last two projects? We hope you enjoyed this video and are inspired to transform a piece of furniture around your own home. Here's another one we think you'll like as well. And just a reminder, empowering you to create a home you love. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.